The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon on the Talkstar Radio Network and the Exxon Broadcast Network and our growing family of broadcast affiliates right across Canada, the United States, Central America, the Caribbean, South America, the Pacific Rim, Australia, Asia, India, Africa, and Europe. If you'd like to give us a call, worldwide toll-free, 1-800-610-7035. That's 1-800-610-7035. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, TV at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Cristala Rosina. And... Um, Cristal studied languages at L'Institut Français in London, English and psychology at the University of Surrey, where she conducted some of the earliest research into the psychology of music and education at Greenwich University. Since picking up her poetic pen eight years ago for the first time since childhood, her award-winning work has been continually featured in journals, anthologies, and on radio. A college lecturer in English and psychology for many years, Cristela now devotes most of her time to writing and performing arts. She sings with Imperial Opera London and the English Arts uh, Choral and launched the first of her poetry uh, concerts just five years ago. And um, since then, she has taken these innovative concerts to a range of UK venues and festivals, giving both lunchtime recitals in full evening performances. Cristela's first collection of poetry, Watercolor Essence of the Moon, was published by Publish America in 2006. Psychic and mediumistic herself, and therefore with a great affinity with the romantic poets, especially Shelley, Cristela is proud to help lead a romantic renaissance and shares with Shelley his spiritual uh, vision of world ruled by, listen to this, love, not law. A vision, the beginnings of which, despite what seem uh, to many as appearances, to the contrary, is already beginning to manifest. And joining me now from the United Kingdom is Cristela Rosina. And Cristela, welcome to the Exxon. Thanks very much, Rob. It's lovely to be here. I've got to tell you something. I love that. Love, not law. It is lovely, isn't it? He was writing 200 years ago, so uh, he had quite a quite a task in hand. It's uh, it's been taking some time to manifest. But isn't it true that all the wonderful, all the wonders that come to pass in this life of ours take the longest to manifest? I think so. I think they do. Yes, I think they're usually the biggest. Um, uh-huh. Often the ones that meet with the greatest resistance. Sadly. And uh, therefore, you're absolutely right. They they tend to take some time to to come to fruition. Christella, when did you know you were a psychic and medium? Oh gosh, um, I've been told this for quite some time, quite quite a long time before I actually came to believe it. And uh, I never quite accepted it because I always thought that. People who were psychic and mediumistic were very special, mm-hmm. and and it had to be very special to be that way. And I just couldn't believe that I was quite special enough. And um, and then about about sixteen, seventeen years ago, um, I I had to come to believe it because things happened um, quite disturbingly, unfortunately, which I think is. It's quite often the way uh, that a lot of people do come to realize 
that uh, they, they are psychically inclined. And I could no longer doubt it. Um, I, I just had to accept it. I'd, I'd had the, the signs, if you like, the actual... I, I hesitate to use this word evidence. Because Christella, why do we do this? Scientific. You and I have to take a commercial break. We're going to have a bit of a cliffhanger here. Exo Nation, Cristalla Rosina is our special <laughs> guest. <laughs> www.cristallarosina.co.uk We'll be back on the other side of this two-minute commercial break as the Exxon continues live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network and the Exxon Broadcast Network. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back, everyone. Christina, Cristalla Rosina is our special guest, and uh, we're talking to her all the way from the United Kingdom. Her website is cristallarosina.co.uk. And before we went to the commercial break, we were talking about a uh, an experience you had that when you when you discovered how you were a psychic mediumistic, and I was wondering if you could pick up the story. Yes, sure. Um, well, I'd moved down to the south coast of England, mm-hmm. um, probably only about 30 or 40 miles from where I am now. Um, I hadn't wanted to go, but I needed a job at the time, and a job came up down there. And I had been very uncomfortable right from the very start, from the very first visit down there. And um, it, it seems crazy under the circumstances, feeling that way that I moved, but I, but I, I felt so pressured to, to go down there and went. And um, the whole time that I was down there, I ended up staying about 18 months. I was absolutely terrified, which sounds very dramatic and very extreme, but that is how it was. And I couldn't explain this terror. Sometimes it was quite literally blind panic Mm. and um, there was nothing obvious to account for it and um, I only eventually found out what it was all about. Um, I I eventually got a bit of information from some of my students. Some of my students, one of my classes was an adult class and uh, a couple of the students got talking to me and this conversation came up. Um, and they inform- they were very interested, and uh, one of them informed me that there was apparently a lot of black magic, as she expressed it, that's the term that she used, in the area. Well, that was the first time that I'd um, had any kind of explanation for this. So it was a relief to get something that made some sense. But it was only just before I was due to leave the area. I, I ended up fleeing it in, in terror, really. I handed in my notice. And um, I was just sort of finishing up, working out my notice. When a friend of mine um, came down to visit, 
And it was through her that I learnt about the work of Andrew Collins, who you may or may not have heard of. Uh, I think he's quite well known here. And the work he'd been doing psychically in um, clearing negative energies from various spots around the country. When I say negative energies, that's perhaps a bit too mild. Um, Clearing where uh, negative entities had been somehow, in different ways, contaminating a site. Um, It's too complex for me to say more than that. You'd have to read his books where he goes into it in in great detail. And a lot of this apparently had been um, originating in, in precisely the spot where I was. And it made absolute sense. All this uh, suddenly, all this this terror mm-hmm. that I felt in the whole area, um, absolutely made sense by by uh, you know the, the explanations contained in his work, which had been unearthing these uh, these dreadful goings on. When we're talking about negative energy, are we talking? Are we talking about um, what some people would call evil? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely ghastly stuff. Um, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not his agent. I'm not a promoter of his books, but the particular book that I think concerned um, the, the kind of things I was picking up. He's written several books now. It's called The Black Alchemist. And uh, this, was the name, this was the name of a guy who apparently was based down there and was doing some uh, dreadful things. I mean, for example, one day, I was very, very busy down there. I was teaching down there, and um, uh, yeah, te- teaching is quite a, quite a killer in this country, and I was working all the hours that there is. And uh, on this particular day, it was a Sunday afternoon, and I'd had enough, and I, and I decided I was just going to treat myself to an hour or two off. And it was a lovely, sunny Sunday afternoon, and I was driving out into the country, and um, the English countryside is very pretty. It's Mm -hmm. renowned for having a a particular prettiness of its own, and I was in a very pretty part of it, Um, an idyllic part, many would say. I was actually heading for a village that was a local beauty spot. And I was just approaching this point, and um, everything was, was kind of okay up to then. And I suddenly felt this overriding fear, and I thought, and I just, I just, yeah, I just didn't want to know. I, it, it was a Sunday, it was an afternoon, and I, I was having time off. I really needed that time off. I wanted this break, you know. It was a precious couple of hours. I just wanted to to enjoy the sunshine and enjoy the countryside, mm-hmm. and and the, and the families out having a Sunday afternoon off, you know. And I thought, what is this? You know, this this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. This is what would be described as an idyllic afternoon. Mm -hmm. Where is this fear coming from? And then I rounded a bend in the road, and I saw it. Saw what? Saw what? And it was the the long man of Alfreston. I don't know if you're familiar with these, um, these ancient chalk carvings, these huge chalk carvings we have in certain parts of the country here. Well, one of them is down just outside the village of Alfreston, Alfreston on the south coast here. Um, and it's a figure of a, a man, a walking man, and it's been carved in the hillside a long, long time ago. Um, I'm sure there are people who could give you the exact dates and things. I, I, I can't, but um, these are ancient carvings. And the figure is huge. You you see it from a distance, and, and of course it doesn't look so big, but when you get there you can hardly see it at all because it's so huge. And these are sacred sites, and they do have a very particular energy, and the energy certainly is not sinister. Um, the energy um, certainly once upon a time would have been very positive, and that's why these, these images were, were carved there. But this was the source of the. I knew at once that this was the source of this fear, and I, I had no doubt that something had happened. Um, something had gone. You know, something awful had happened. Someone had been tampering with the, the energies, or something like that. I knew something had been corrupted. And as I say, it wasn't until afterwards that I found out that um, that, that this was right, and um, a lot of the energies in this part of the country. Um, had been corrupted, and um, some very, 
with, with some very sinister motives. So, so how would you how would you actually corrupt a positive energy and turn it into a negative energy then? Well, for me, it it is purely how I feel. Um, I often know whether I'm safe um, by, by just how I feel. Um, if I feel frightened, if I feel fear, then things are not okay. It often happens to me on the road when I'm driving. If I want to overtake and I'm on a bend and I can't see you know, around that corner, if I feel scared, I know it's not safe. Well, I is it safe at, 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 at any given time? Is it a good idea to pass someone uh, when you can't see around the corner? That that would sound like common sense to me. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch what you said. What? I, I'm, I'm saying I'm that you know, that, you know, when you were talking, you were about, talking about passing someone on a bend on a when you can't see around the corner, that would seem like common sense, sense to me. Um, no, no. When when you're driving along on the road and you can't actually see around a bend. And you want to overtake someone, but conventionally it would be dangerous to overtake right. because you can't actually see round the bend. Exactly. And you can't see whether there's an oncoming car. Mm-hmm. You must remember this is England, and we probably have a lot narrower roads than you. <laughs> um, and a lot of them are country lanes, and they, they are windy, especially where I live. So you literally cannot see. Um, if you're approaching a bend, you can't see beyond. You cannot see if it's safe to overtake at that point. There might be a car coming from the other direction. Mm-hmm. But, but if you're on a bend, you can't see that. And um, and so really, you shouldn't overtake. You know, you, you, you should wait until That's you've got a right, clear yeah. stretch of road and you can see. Well, one thing that works for me, I mean, I don't always follow it, but but even when I don't follow it, obviously, it's uh, after I've gone round, round the bend, as it were, and I'm on the straight stretch, and I can see, I know whether I've been right or not, um, I usually know whether or not it's safe to overtake by how I feel. If I feel frightened, if I feel scared, then usually it's not safe to overtake. There, there's a car around the corner that I can't see, and that really lets me down. But that's how it works with me for positive and, and negative um, energies. If I feel, and it's pretty reliable, if I feel scared... There's something negative going on. I won't always know what it is. I won't always always be able to put my finger on it. But um, there, there'll be something that isn't quite right. So you really so trust your instincts? Uh, for me, yeah, yeah, they usually do work, especially when I'm out and about like this. You know, a lot, lot of what I've been mm-hmm. talking about has been referring to... Listen, you and I have to take a commercial break. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Please stand by. Exonation, our very special guest of this hour is... Cristalla Rosina. Her website is cristallarosina.co.uk. And Christina and I, Cristalla and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues. We're right here on the Talk Star Radio Network from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. We'll be right back. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back, everyone. Cristalla Rosina is our special guest. Her website is cristallarosina.co.uk. 
Cristela, what is this most spookiest encounter you have ever had psychically? <laughs> Goodness me. Um, I think some of the ones I had down, um, down on the south coast, um, as I was just talking about, including that, were, uh, were amongst them. But uh, another one, it was kind of both spooky and uplifting at the same time. It was, it, it was very special. It was Christmas Eve, and uh, I, I was at home. Um, and uh, I wasn't very well. I was hoping to go and drive over to my parents for Christmas Day, mm -hmm. but uh, I'd already realized that I probably wasn't going to be well enough to do that. And uh, I, was, I was feeling a tad sorry for myself, and I was, I was mooching about the kitchen, doing things in the kitchen. And uh, when I heard this little whirring noise coming from my lounge, and um, through the um, sort of mild fog of not being, you know, sort of 100% well, I, I kind of thought, you know, what's that? And, uh, and I, I figured that uh, my video had come on. This is the sort of days of DVDs. And um, I was a little surprised because I realized that I hadn't set it to come on. Anyway, I, I was, you know how it is when you're not, not too well, things don't sure. always bother you as much as, you know, you, you're not kind of... 100% focused, and I just carried on doing what I was doing. And I could hear this thing, you know, sort of whirring away in the background, and then eventually it switched off. But it bugged me, because I thought, I'm sure I didn't set that to record. And I went back and checked, and I hadn't set it to record. And I thought, well, what is going on here? Why did that come on when it came on? And why did it go off when it went off? And how long was it on for? And then I thought, well, what on earth was on when it was on? And was it recording anything? And I discovered that it had come on at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It had switched on to Channel 3. It had stayed on recording. It had actually recorded for 30 minutes. So that's another three. And... The program it had been recording, that the program that had been broadcasting at that time on that channel, was the film Close Encounters of a Third Kind, another three, mm -hmm. and quite a choice of film. And I thought, well, but which part of the film? The film is more than 30 minutes long. Why did it come on at that point? Why that half an hour? And I rebound the, the tape and had a look to see what was going on, and it had come on just at the point when, in the film, the alien energy is switching on the electrical equipment, dis disrupting the electrical equipment in the house. And I thought, wow, you know, this is, this is too much of a coincidence, and, and nothing like this had, had happened before. And I thought, what else is going on in this half-an-hour segment that it's recorded? Why is it recorded this trip for half hour? So I sat there and watched it, watched it through. And... Um, and, and apart from the starting point when the, the energy was, you know, was switching on the electrical things in the house, I couldn't make much more sense of it. And I was telling a friend of mine later on in the day about this episode. And she had been traveling the world recently and had taken a lot of photos. And, I, and I'd been expressing an interest in seeing these photos and hearing all about her trip. So she, she brought the photos around and... Um, and one of the photos that I've been telling her, now you're going to have to help me out with this, in that stretch of the film, what is the, the mound, the name of the mound, the hill, in that, in that stretch of the film that's featured? It's a particular mound. Uh, it's, or a it's, hill. it's called Devil's Tower. That's it, that's it, that's the one, the Devil's Tower. Mm -hmm. And I was telling her that, you know, this, this bit had come up in the film, and she said, oh, we've been there on our trip, and I've got photos of it. And she was showing me the photos of it, and, uh, and, and then the conversation went elsewhere, and, you know, we talked about the rest mm -hmm. of it. And I was conveying all this to another friend um, at a later date. This is a friend who has a great interest in these, in, in these kinds of things, and in fact is connected with the group of people. I mentioned um, a particular author earlier on who was doing a lot of psychic work into uh, particular sites in Britain. Mm -hmm. 
and um, and I, I I came to meet him later on and, and read his books and attend some of his conferences and so forth and met some of the other people who were involved in, in this work and one of them became a particular friend and uh, I was talking to him and telling him about this and he was in the midst of, of writing a book of his own continuing some of these things and he had been particularly after a picture of the Devil's Tower for his book and this was pre- um, internet or, or if the internet was up and running it was certainly the early days you didn't just go there for a, to find a picture you know and he just hadn't been able to find a, a find a photo for this for, for this book and I was telling him about this and um, and he said well I need a photo I've been trying and trying to get this photo will your friend allow me to use her photo and uh, so anyway, I, I put them in touch, and uh, I'm sure she was quite happy to, to let him use the photo. But it was just amazing that I was I was unwell, and this was also in the fairly you know you were asking at the beginning um, when we were talking at the beginning when I first discovered this was not long after I, I came back from the South Coast, and not long after I discovered that. Okay, I'm probably going to have to admit <laughs> that, you know, these people who've been telling me that I was psychic and mediumistic were probably right. So what um, do you think the connection was, or why do you think that whatever the forces may have been that triggered your VCR to start recording Close Encounters of a Third Kind at 3 o'clock in the afternoon for 30 minutes, what was the ultimate message, and what do you believe the ultimate reason was? I think partly it was my own guides re reassuring me because it was the time of year that it was and and feeling unwell and, and, and kind of feeling sorry for myself mm -hmm. as one does in those kind of circumstances and, and knowing that I wasn't going to be able to um, get away for Christmas Day. But why I Close Encounters? Why not a, a Christmas story, for example, part of a Christmas carol or some other... Of, of the most wonderful Christmas TV shows, I, I'm 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 confused by the yeah. by the uh, the choice of close encounters of a third kind. I think it was a combination of, as I say, what what I, what I was just saying about doing something mm -hmm. that would make me sit up and, and think there's something going on here, and, and is somebody trying to tell me something? Um, and, and that is that they are here. But also, I think the connections, I think they knew that I would, the, the three connections, that was another three that happened but between myself and my friend and the, the other friend who needed the picture, mm -hmm. um, I think they were making connections that they knew I would appreciate. They, 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 they knew I would appreciate those communications and those communications happening in a non-conventional way. When you they said... They knew I would appreciate that. And I think they also, they knew that this friend of mine was after that photo and wanted that photo. And they knew that that other friend of mine... Well, wait a sec here. I, I, who, you keep on saying they knew. They knew. Who are mm -hmm. they? My, my own guides. My own spirit guides. Prior to prior to, you, Rob. <laughs> pardon? That seems to have flawed you. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm just trying to be. Uh, I'm having a hard time following the, the the connection between close encounters of a third kind, your spirit guides, mm -hmm. and Christmas. If if the VCR would have gone on and it recorded, uh, you know, one of the one of the the Christmas shows that mm -hmm. that that touches all at Christmas time, uh, that mm -hmm. to me would be more more significant than Close Encounters of a Third Kind at Christmas. Well, yeah, I, I know what you mean, but I don't think it would have been of so much significance to me. Um, I'm not religious not mm -hmm. not in the conventional sense and i think if they had switched on some um christmasy show um i i'm really not sure you know i i, I, I would have been looking for some significance uh, and, and they would have known that i would have been doing that is, is it possible um, that you, that 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 your your vcr 
could have been preset and you forgot about it and no. tell me it was it a no, remote control was it a remote control alt uh, uh, vcr is it possible that somebody in the neighborhood could have actually been setting their vcr and set your vcr at the same time well, I couldn't comment on, on the, the, the technicalities because I'm just not a technical person. I, I, I don't know how the, how the whole thing works. Mm -hmm. But I think it's unlikely because I, I'm quite happy to consider these ordinary explanations. I don't, I, I don't throw them away, you know. I, I don't go into these things all sort of starry-eyed and, and mm -hmm. insist um, that we have an unconventional explanation the way that some people insist purely on conventional explanations. And, and I considered all of this. Yeah. Uh, but I think not because, for a start, when I record a program, I use the automatic thing. You know, I code mm -hmm. in the number. Right. So it will go in at the beginning of the program and it will record the whole program. So that was one thing that got me. This came on mid-program. And it didn't even record the whole, and what's on, it didn't even record the whole of that program. It just recorded 30 minutes of it. Oh, prior, and, you know, prior, that, that prior was, to the that recording. That was one Interesting question. You Prior know, to the recording it, of the Close Encounters of a Third Kind, did you have an interest in UFOs and alien presence here on this planet? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I have an interest in, in all of these things that count as the, um, you know, the non-orthodox, if you like. It's difficult to find a generic term. You know, you use the paranormal, don't yes. you, as, as a term to cover it. Um, I mean, that, that will do as a generic term. Yes, I'm interested in all of those things. And and when did your interest in all of this start? I think it's always been there. Um, I'm not aware of any particular start date. Mm -hmm. I think it's just always been there. And um, I would have, would have tuned in, you know, when articles came up in the press or in, in other parts of the media, um, or if I saw a book or something like that, I, I would have tuned in. And I think if you, you know, when you are interested in, in these things, you get leads into other right. Um, um, areas where there's some information about those things, don't you? So you had already been interested in what we call the paranormal prior to your your gifts kicking in. Uh, yes, okay. yes, de definitely. Um, it just, as I said, it, it took a while for me to to fully accept that I had those gifts. Um, but that was really, I think, to do with my own confidence and my own self-belief rather than, than anything else. What is it that makes you believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that the paranormal is real, spiritual, and not in, manifested by the person who, or who experiences the paranormal event? <laughs> well, that's very... <laughs> That's very interesting. My goodness, that's a deep question. We're getting into mirrors here, perception and perception of perception. Um, well, for a start, uh, and I think this is the root of it, really, um, it, if you, need, you need to think about history and how we have come to understand things, anything. Well, whatever we know and understand about the world, um, everything that we accept as truth, everything that we accept as fact, if you prefer that, prefer that word to truth. At, at any point in history, the, the, the further back you go um, in, in recorded history, let, let's just take sort of relatively recent recorded history. I mean, let's say the last sort of 2,000 years or something. I'm not going back eons and eons yet. Um, the further back you know, the less we've known. And, uh, you know, and, and going the other way, the, the, the closer we get to this day, the more that we have come to know. So the point is that at any point in history, we've, we've never had the full story. There's always been more to know. And every time we research something, um, and in the last 2,000 years or so, this has chiefly been done through science, through scientific method and approach. If every time we investigate something, the truth turns out to be greater than we formerly thought it to be. Science is forever surprising people. It's forever surprising its own adherence. 
every time we research something, whether it's about animals, non-human animals, or plants, or the planet, or um, space, beyond this particular planet. Cristela, you and I have to take our final break. Please stand by. Cristela Rosina is our special guest. Christina, Chris, I'm sorry, Cristela Rosina.co.uk. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. Exonation, Cristela Rosina is our special guest. Her website is cristelarosina.co.uk. We've got about uh, three minutes left, uh, Cristela. First of all, I want to thank you very much for joining us here tonight on the Exxon. And I, I was wondering if you just, if we, could, if we could just finish up or wrap up uh, your response to my last question, whether or not it's mm-hmm. actually paranormal or or the manifestation of the person who's experiencing the event. Um. Well, as I was saying, if we if we look at how we have learned all our knowledge so far, every time we research something, we find that the, the truth is greater than we imagined it to be before. So, therefore, when people experience these things, these things that we don't fully understand right now, mm-hmm and are not fully accepted by a lot of people right now. Who is to say that these things are not true? Who is to say that these things are not fact? Maybe a lot of what seems elusive and ungraspable right now and has a lot of question marks over it right now. Isn't that how all truths once were? I mean, the Earth still orbited the sun when everybody thought the sun orbited the earth. You know, that that incorrect belief. Yeah, but you know, you you would think by now, you would think by now with all the people out there who claim to be investigators, researchers, Mm -hmm. and and self-proclaimed experts in every Mm -hmm. aspect of the paranormal, that some proof would have been brought forward by now, but none has. But why? 
Maybe why, because why it does make maybe been? well because maybe it's just a manifestation of their own over imaginative imaginations and that there is no paranormal. Maybe the paranormal is a is a self protective mechanism for for blaming or for justifying actions that humans take. Um, firstly, I think there is so much experience. Um, across humanity and across different fields. I mean, you were asking me whether I was interested in UFOs, mm -hmm. um, and which suggests that you know you treat that as a subject in its own right. And I like to, and I, and I said I was interested in all these things mm -hmm. that come under this kind of generic label of the paranormal, and, and that divides into an awful lot of, of individual subjects. But across those individual subjects, there are awful lot of people having an awful lot of similar experience. You know, you and I have just run out of time for tonight. I want to take this opportunity of thanking you very much and uh, continued success in your quest. Personally, I believe that the weird, the wacky, the bizarre really had nothing to do with your VCR turning on. I put it to a more logical explanation that for some reason you did not want to pursue because maybe it just filled that specific need, that gap, that you were feeling down, it was Christmas time, and you took this as a sign, which is okay, but don't forget the possibility, which I believe is greater than the improbability, that there's a very logical explanation to it and spirituality and spirits had nothing to do with it. We'll be back on the other side of this.